direct from the web, it's Billy Masters Live. And now, please welcome your host, Billy Masters. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Billy Masters Live. Oh, my God, we're coming in a little hot today. I'm looking at the... uh at the screen. But anyway, today is, what the hell day is it? April 28th. And uh, welcome to Billy Masters Live. Of course, I am Billy Masters because who else would be hosting this show other than Billy Masters? And we have two fabulous guests today. We have legendary designer Bob Mackey and a member of the fabulous Pointer Sisters and pretty fabulous in her own right, Miss Anita Pointer. But first, we will start with a little personal anecdote. And yes, there's a wire here today. We're having headphone troubles as always. So anyway, in the, oh God, I guess late 80s, early 90s, I was working with Eartha Kitt. Why wouldn't I be? Um, kind of an agent, kind of a publicist, kind of somebody she would just call and yell at a lot. And um, we had, almost gotten her, here's a little bit of the Sondheim trivia for people who are paying attention to Sondheim this past week, is um, Eartha was contacted, I was contacted, for Eartha to be the first replacement for Bernadette Peters in Into the Woods. And she was asked to come in and audition with a whole lot of people. The role just in case you're wondering, just cut to the chase, ended up going to Felicia Rashad, who happened to be on the most popular television show, The Cosby Show. But Eartha really wanted the part, and she flew in. She had been doing a concert in Arizona, I believe. And she flew in, and I met her in New York on a Sunday matinee. And through the whole show, she kept digging her fingernails into my arm, whispering, I could do this part. So she thought this was going to be her big comeback. As it turns out, as I said, they went with Felicia Rashad. And um, a few months later, we got her Follies in London's West End. And at the time that Into the Woods started its national tour, she um, we were called again asking if Eartha would lead the tour, but she was already in the West End. And the bottom line is I didn't make a cent off of her, but I had so many great stories. She at one point wanted to start a website. Websites were just starting and we couldn't figure out what to call it. And literally I called her up and left her a message pretending that I was her just saying, mm, I had this idea for the website. Let's call it com. You just press the R and then type dot com. She thought that was very funny. And um, so we have very few pictures together, but there was one event at Boston's Club Cabaret. And we took this lovely picture after a show. Here it is. And oh, God, look how young I was. And um, we look very happy. And I said to her, this is not what our relationship is about. Could you give me a picture that I will remember our relationship? This was the picture we took. See, the nails are out. And that's not a happy face. I mean, it looks like a smile, but I'm pulling away. Anyway, that is my Eartha Kitt story. These two people today, I have so many stories about, and I am fairly confident we will not get through them all, but I'm jumping right in. Our first guest is a legendary designer. I grew up as a little gay boy in a Boston suburb. Bob Mackey meant Hollywood. It meant glamour. It meant excitement. To think that I would know him, have vacationed with him, consider him a friend, and be able to ask him to be on the show was certainly beyond the young Billy Masters' wildest dreams. And yet here he is, my friend, Bob Mackey. Oh, wait, hold on. We've got you muted. Hold on a second. Let me unmute you. I can do it. Okay, there you are. I'm here now. Yes, you are. How are you, darling? I'm, I'm good. I'm in Palm Springs. I'm, I'm having a lovely kind of early, late spring, whatever this is we're in. So I can't ask how you're doing during the pandemic. You're doing fine. Well, I, you know, I, I just moved here and I have a lovely home with lots of light, high ceilings. And uh, 
I'm, you know, I stay home. What can I do? Where did you, when did you move? Because you were around the corner from me, like near Danny Guerrero's house for a short time. Well, I was, yeah, but I moved, I moved in January, I guess. Or oh, December. okay. December. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. And you like, are you, was it something you wanted to do? Had you been I didn't know it is something I wanted to do. I, I wanted to, to, to move in somewhere that I wanted to be able to really settle in and stay. And, um, you know, I can still work and do things. I can live anywhere, really. Well, you you usually live on the road. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Last year, I was, we were doing the share show. And, you know, it took over, over a year, probably almost two years to do it. So I was on the road the whole time. And, you know, it's funny. I mentioned that you were living around the corner from my house, and yet I've seen you everywhere but in Los Angeles. I know. You know, I we, know. Both, we both show up. Uh, we, have a, we have a very wide circle of friends. And I do have a picture. We, we spend a lot of time in Provincetown. Obviously, it doesn't look like we're going to this summer. It doesn't look very hopeful, really, at no. this point. But we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I, but anyway, I found this picture of a dinner that we all had. Yes. And this is our little group. There's Joe, of course, your assistant, and uh, Marilyn May, and you, and Danny, and me, and Mark, and I can't see who else is there. But uh, we, we have a lot of fun. fun people there, yeah. Um, and, you know, I do say, you know, we vacation together, but we actually, we, we have our alone time, we have our together time. <laughs> what I love about walking through Provincetown with you is... You're the biggest celebrity in the world to the drag queens in town. Well, it's kind of a curse, and <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really kind of weird. But but you know, uh, the first time I went there, there were six shared drag queens working in the town. Uh, really, I had this whole army of of you know long black haired women following me <laughs> all over town, and uh, it was it was weird. To tell you the truth. Um, you know, I remember I first met you and I'd forgotten this, uh, but it was years ago at the Academy Theater had done an evening for Mitzi Gaynor and right. you were there and, um, <laughs> you and Mitzi's career really converged at a very fortuitous time, I guess, for both of you. Well, she was my, she was my first, uh, big, big lady star that, that asked me to do her costumes for Vegas and for her specials and all of that. I didn't have a, a special person before that. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So what had you been well, doing before that? Well, I was doing shows and, and TV specials and, and all kinds of things like that, but I didn't have a, a really regular lady. Like, mm -hmm. And then the year after I started with Mitzi, I went I went over and started working with Carol Burnett, which I'm, I still work with Carol Burnett. So yes, you do. It, it was all kind of all happened at the same time. And then and wasn't the it? Year, Oh, go First year the Carol Burnett show, Cher was on, you know, and then I became her, her favorite, whatever. <laughs> well, certainly her go-to, without a yeah, doubt. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> I think people, a lot of these stars, when they think of certainly Mitzi and certainly Cher and even Carol Burnett, when they think of them, your name is inextricably linked to them as, you know, sort of it's a collaboration. You're not just a designer. Well, I, I try, you know, I try to make costumes that that give you more than just another another dress, another pretty gown to dance. You know, and these ladies are all funny ladies. They're all very, very funny. And uh, and they have good sense of humor. And, and it's, it works. It works for me. Was there ever anybody you worked with that you couldn't get a handle on, that it just wasn't the right fit? And nothing against them, but... You know. Oh, well, usually if it's somebody that, that I couldn't get a right fit, there was plenty against them. So I, I just, <laughs> you know, there were times when you say, oh, I don't want to ever see her again. <laughs> but but that, there are very few of those. Actually. But even if you really like somebody, are you ever lost for an inspiration for that person or for that moment? Once, once in a while, I, I can love the person but have right. no inspiration. But sometimes, that must be frustrating. Up, but sometimes I end up doing the job anyway. And I realize, no, no, I really understood them. But you get nervous. You know, you want it to be perfect. And you want to you want to give them something that nobody else has, which is important. 
You know, I remember one of our first summers in Provincetown, I had been reading a book, an autobiography, or a biography, it wasn't an autobiography, about another designer. And one thing struck me, and I remember having a conversation with you. Is, is it a name I should know? <laughs> yeah, but you know, I no need to mention it. Um, oh, but okay. well, actually, no, I don't think it matters. It's Calvin Klein, and yeah. there was and there was sort of a sadness at the end of the book that he was happiest when he started out and was designing coats, which I didn't know anything about for right, women, right. and that this was his joy. And now he's almost, you know, just putting his name on things, and that creative joy is lacking. Now, again, that's somewhat of an assumption, but. Well, no, there there is that thing when you're in school, design school, and um, you you're good at certain things, and then you might end up not doing those things so much later on. So, what did you start out to do? Uh, I I just wanted to be I just wanted to be in show business. Oh, I really? Design, I wanted to design for the stage when mm-hmm. I was a little boy, and I'm old. So, the movies when I was a little boy were all about show business. Mm-hmm. They were all right. about getting getting to Broadway or playing the palace if you're in vaudeville. They were all about that. And they would show that train going, you know, mm-hmm. from one town to the next town to the next town. Before you know it, they're playing the Hippodrome in New York. Or, right. <laughs> you know, or Radio City or the Palace or whatever. And and I just thought that was the most glamorous uh, lifestyle I could imagine. Was um, it I the designing or the show business? business? But, you know. Kind was it happened. the designing or show business that was more? It was, it was both. It was really? both, and also the fact that that as a designer, I could I could do things for them. I could help them. I could, you know, make them more special than just putting on another dress you bought at Macy's and going out and singing a song. You know, right. uh, it, it's very interesting when you have somebody. Well, like today, you have Anita Pointer on. And, mm-hmm. and the Pointer sisters had such personality and they had such a look when I first met them. I thought, oh, I want to work with them. That, that, that'll be really fun. And, and do you think at that time, because they had a specific look, that you are pigeonholed into that look? Or could you let your imagination run wild? I, well, it worked both ways. You know, uh-huh. I, could take, I could take them places visually that they probably never thought of, mm-hmm. but yet it was perfect for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So how yeah. much getting to know a client do you have to go through? <clears throat> if somebody knew, like, you for know, instance, you worked with Pink recently right, and designed right. her tour. I assume you didn't know her before you worked for her. I, I didn't really know her, no. Okay, so how does and that I, work? I, have a, I mean, I have great respect for her talent. She's a great writer. She She's just amazing. She gets up on that trapeze and does great stuff. Unbelievable, yeah. But I don't think I get along with her so well. No, so well, really, but you so still I, worked I, I with really her. I haven't worked with her in, for a while. Right. But when you meet somebody new like her, do you do <laughs> your research about them? Do you listen to the music? How does it work? Um, usually, um, yeah, I do research, but I, I also like their way of performing. And I mm-hmm. want to... I want to enhance that visually. It's it's very important. Or if there's a script, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes you know you have a script and you have to take that character and and make that work for that star. And very often it it wouldn't have, uh, you know, very often you'd say, oh, do you think she could play that part? Mm-hmm. And then you can make it right for her visually. And are you and, able to push them as much as they push you? Sometimes. Sometimes yeah. and sometimes no. Sometimes they they don't want to hear anything, and then right. other times I'll say, "What would happen if we did this, this, and this visually for that part?" Mm-hmm. I used to do that with Carol Burnett all the time, and we had the best time. We just had the best time. Well, and- see, she seems very gutsy that she a challenge is something she will thrive on. So I think that was probably a great fit for you. Well, she did. She loved a challenge. But she also loved doing something that was a little different. You know, when when we did her show every week, um, she would do how many characters in one week? Maybe you a know, dozen or more. A dozen, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and if, if we could take uh, what was kind of a normal, everyday character that she often did, sort of, but not a well-known one, I'd say, what if she is this or what if she's that or, or or what if we just black out that one tooth 
who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, it was always about what we could do to make to make it funnier or to make it amusing or where does she live? So very mm-hmm. often in the scripts, when they would come in, it would say woman walks into a bar and right. sits at the bar. And you go, well, who is she? Where does mm-hmm. she live? Why is she at the bar by herself? And mm-hmm. the, very often the writers wouldn't put that part in. And, and I would kind of think, well, what if she lives, you know, right off Madison Avenue and, and she's, she's quite wealthy, but her husband is never at home, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And, and, but she's well-dressed because she has plenty of money. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I talked to Carol about it a little bit. And she goes, oh, yeah. And then it starts going, you know, in her head. Mm-hmm. Things changed. Yeah, yeah, I think there are some performers you can do that with. Sam Harris, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about, yeah. you would always ask somebody where your character had been. And I remember asking somebody, uh, where, had your, where, where were you before you entered the stage? And she turned to me and said, I was in the wings. And I went, well, that's not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. a start, I guess. Well, um, yeah, we- no. You got to want to be in the wings. You got to want to be part of it all. Well, that's true. I guess in the wings, metaphorically speaking. Well, no, but it's true. You're, you're waiting for that moment to, to do your best work. And well, I was always waiting for that moment. You know, I never wanted to change things drastically, but sometimes, sometimes you get a script and it wasn't very visually very interesting. And I thought, what could I do to make that better for them? Um, it's funny you mentioned waiting in the wings. I had no intention of talking about this, but I remember the first time I met Carol Channing, and she was very old and shuffling along, and she was in the wings and very gingerly sitting down. This was at the reopening of the El Portal, which I think you were there when they reopened. I was. That. You might have been. And um, now where is that? That's North Hollywood. Oh right. Oh okay. On Lancashire. Okay. Lancashire? Right, right. Now I know. Now I know. And uh, like Donald O'Connor came back, and that's where his family had performed in vaudeville. But right. anyway, Carol Channing was backstage, and they said, "Okay, get in position." And she's shuffling along, and I went, "Oh my God, how is this old woman going to perform?" The minute the light hit her, she was up. She was fabulous, and the minute it was oh. off her, off Listen. stage. If she could jump, if she could jump out of her grave today, she would be hitting all her marks and doing all her stuff perfectly. Don't worry. Well, I remember we saw her in one of her last performances in Provincetown. Provincetown, yes. And I have this photo of the two of you. Uh, oh, you do. Yes. Here we are. You know, I pulled up all my Mackie photos, so I didn't know I was going to talk about that. But had you, you worked with Carol? <laughs> I have some of them. <laughs> I <see. laughs> Had you worked with Carol? Carol Channing? Of course. Yes. Of course. One of the first things I ever did in television was, was the Danny Thomas a Wonderful World of Burlesque. He did several of these specials. That, oh. And he would, he would bring in real burlesque comics and uh, get kind of glamorous Lucille Ball and Sid Charisse and Nanette Pepre to come in and be you know, queen of burlesque or whatever. And mm-hmm. Carol Cheney was on one of the first ones we did. And uh, she was, I, I learned a lot about Carol Channing on, on that one, but, but she was amazing, you know, and she, she kind of really got what I did. She, she liked what I, what I was, she would tell me what she wanted, but then when I'd show her stuff, she'd get all excited. So that was good. You know, one of the things I loved about her, even that last performance, she had that wonderment and youthfulness when she performed. And I think that's what people who are drawn to show business usually start that's with. all she wanted to do. Yeah. I've never known anybody that, that would rehearse to the extent that she would rehearse. Oh, wow. And, and she would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And she'd be off in a corner going through her lines and doing, you know, and they might be just for that night. And the, to the next night, somebody else would be in the audience and she'd have a whole another little thing worked out. You, know, you wow. never know with her. Um, where did you grow up? Where did you start out? Uh, I, I was born in Los Angeles. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I grew up 
you know, out by the race, uh, not by, the, well, it was by the racetrack, the Hollywood Park racetrack, but it, we also had all the jets going over our house on the way to the airport there mm -hmm. on LAX. And I lived there from first grade to eighth grade with my grandparents. And um, uh, my favorite thing in the world was, was going to see movies, you know. So again, like that, Carol that Burnett. Was, that was my school. Yeah, yeah well, Carol, Carol Burnett talks Carol about and, it. Carol and I are like, we didn't know at the time, but we, we, we could have been in the same, you know, she went to the movies with her grandmother. With her grandmother, right? Yeah, my grandmother only went to a couple movies. She took me to see Stella Dallas. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and I don't know, and Cleopatra with Claudia Colbert. You know, oh, it was wow. like a, a rerun house. It was, they were all old movies, but she, it was mm -hmm. something she wanted to see again. Otherwise she could care less. She'd rather <laughs> watch, watch wrestling on, on TV. Really? Yeah. She was quite the number. My grandfather really liked, he liked the pretty girls with the feathers and the beads dancing. <laughs> so well, you might have gotten that from him. <laughs> well, I, I just, listen, I just loved, I love show business and yeah. nobody in my house or my mother or my sister, nobody, none of those people I knew ever looked like Betty Grable or Rita Hayworth or, or, those girls, or, we, or Marilyn Monroe, for that matter, who, who look like Marilyn Monroe. Sure. Did your family, <laughs> did your grandparents and your uh, immediate family live to see your success? Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. Did it matter? They, well, they always said, I take after my Uncle Harry, who was a jeweler, jewelry designer. Mm -hmm. you know, and I thought, well, I'm not exactly like Uncle Harry, but I'm, you know, close. But I, do, I loved Uncle Harry because... He was very artistic. <laughs> and so how did you get into design? Did you go to college? I, um, I listen, I was ready. I was ready to design shows when I was in high school. Wow. I was, I was designing stuff, you know, for the school plays and I would be in them and then I would paint scenery and, and uh, I, I don't know. It was just something that I knew I wanted to do. The minute, the minute I saw Gene Kelly in American in Paris, Mm -hmm. And the ballet came on, this incredibly beautiful ballet of, of uh, French Impressionists. Mm -hmm. um, I said, I, I think I could do that. Really? I, in, my, in my heart, I went, oh. And I said, well, who does that anyway? I didn't even, I didn't even realize that, that there's a, somebody called a costume designer. I just Did you thought, think like the actors showed, showed up in their movies, clothes? The movies came that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just there. You know, and all of a sudden I saw that and then I, I, I stopped and, and I, I stayed and watched it another time and saw that there was somebody called a costume designer. And I thought, that's what I want to be. Isn't so that how really? do you get from there to even designing? How did, what was your journey like? You just keep working at it. Yeah. And, and in high school, I decided I wanted to be that. I was in, when, I, when that movie came out, I was, oh, I think I was 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know about all that, but I did know about French painters and like Toulouse Lautrec or Renoir or all those painters that that ballet was based on. And mm -hmm. I had books about that. And I said, Oh, that's like that book I have. And I was going through my books and I went, wow. So I used to do scenery and paper dolls with costumes and whatever. And I, I would play a record mm -hmm. and turn the flashlight on it. Like, a you know, this was, how I amused myself. I wasn't <laughs> playing. I wasn't playing baseball or football with the other guys down the street. I was had my own little theater in my bedroom. Were you supported? Like, did the, back then that must have seemed really odd. Uh, today, really? everyone wants to be in show business. But. Well, really strange. My uncle, one of my uncles, said, "What do you want to be when you grow up, Bobby?" And I said, um, "I want to be a costume designer on Broadway." Yeah. Well, his eyes rolled back into his head and he just sort of walked away. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> you know, nobody, nobody in my family, they were very theatrical, but they weren't theatrical. In, in the <laughs> way. They were just theatrical as characters. Somebody should have written, a, you know, a play about them. But did but you draw, didn't... did you draw on any of them for people you designed for? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Uh, when I started out as a little kid, I would draw pictures of ladies in these dresses from the 1940s. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, and then I would put the initials of my grandmother or my mm-hmm. aunt B or my sis, my teenage sister, you know, and it was always fun because they always kind of look like, like hookers on a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought it was very glamorous. Did they ever let you dress them? No, <laughs> they didn't, they didn't trust me. Um, <laughs> no, it was, it was all very, very strange. And, and then when, even when I started being really professional, people knew who I was and I would do things that I give it to, I give one of them to my mother for Christmas. And then she'd say, do people really wear things like this? <laughs> you know, and I, I was always doing things to her to, so she would ask those questions. I had one, one time I did a sweater, an intarsia sweater. That's where they knit the whole design. In. And it was, it was a Nubian African princess on one side with the whole headdress down the side. My mother was the whitest woman. <laughs> she, said, she said, I don't know if I could wear a sweater with a black lady on it. Oh. Said, too bad, too bad. <laughs> Someone else will. Somebody did. And a lot of people <laughs> did, and they paid a lot of money for those things. Well, that's um, true. That's you true. know, it, it's it's interesting. I remember um, us talking about. I'd seen you on television. Uh, you have a line of uh, designs on QVC, correct? Well, I do. That that couldn't be further away from show business. No, I mean it is like show business in a way because you're, you're. But it is TV. more ready to wear. <laughs> It's completely ready to wear, yeah. and it's for normal people. It's not, uh, and it can be all sizes. You know, we start extra, extra small, and we go all the way up to three X. Well, and I've every, I've every, loved watching everything you. we sell. Is you know, of that group will be the same price. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you use ten times more fabric on the larger one. And and I know that fabric's expensive. It's not cheap. <laughs> but what I love, because I've sat and watched you, and also your assistant Joe. I've seen Joe on there as well. Yeah, Joe, and, Joe goes on. He yeah. he does shows. He does very well. Um, but what I loved was I love hearing the people call in, and there will be say, you know, I don't want to stereotype, but say a Midwestern housewife who it's been her dream to have something by Bob Mackey, and even if it's a scarf, it makes her feel so special. And I just love hearing those stories. Well, I, you know, I, I like that too, you know, and I love it when they're happy about things and, um, and they think about what they're going to have and send me letters and wouldn't you do that same thing, but do it, please do it in, in, in gray purple or something, you know, and I go, <laughs> okay. you know, whatever. And what I love is you called the line. I'm just going to show it. It is wearable art. And I think that's really what it is. Well, we, I hope so. You know, I mean, clothing, it seems it to me. Clothing, clothing are, I mean, they're costumes, really, because, because otherwise we'd all be wearing Mao jackets, which we might still right. do one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing is, you know, costumes, you put it on and you, you put it on and you think, oh, I hope everybody likes the way I look. And there are ladies that really worry about what their girlfriends think rather than you know, what the, what the handsome man and the, in the other room thinks it's. Yeah, it's, do you believe that? Do you believe we <clears throat> dress for other women? Oh, very often, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. Um, the other thing you have, and which I also love, is you do have accessories like this parrot. <laughs> yes. And um, I think I have heard women talk on the television that they will get like a brooch or a scarf or something, and it just it also. Not only does it elevate the outfit and give it a little bit more festive look, but it elevates them mentally. Well, but why not? Why yeah. not? Don't you get elevated when you when you buy a new shirt and you spend a little sure. more than you should and you put it on and you look in the mirror and, and you say, oh, that color's good on me. Oh, I look good in this. Oh, do I look a little thinner? Yeah, pretty good. All that is very important. Yeah, and I think we do that, but I wonder if maybe uh, somebody in the suburb thinks like that, and this is like a splurge for them. Well, it is a splurge, but but you know, it is the splurge. They're not huge on QVC. No, they the are not. Are very affordable. I would say they're they're inexpensive. I would say yeah, a lot but, of they're, but 
but you know they're very fussy there. Everything oh, really? is beautifully made and beautiful. It is. Yes, it is. It. This is not crap, darling. No, and actually, I have seen some of the stuff because I've been with you when somebody will show you a blouse and say QVC, and I'm like, that's gorgeous. I mean, the colors are so vibrant. We're very careful, and we're very, and they're very careful about they don't want the prices to get out of control. So that must be a really hard thing for you to always be thinking of both things, the price well, point and the quality. Yeah, whatever. You know, you just try to do a good job. Um, I think that it's I think it's great because we're in a day Carol Burnett has talked about they couldn't have a variety show like hers today. Things are so expensive. No. Was it something you went to because other work wasn't happening, or did it just evolve that way? How did it happen? What what QVC? Yeah. Well, I no, I don't know. It was just one of those things that um people, they asked me if I would do it. And I said, well, what would I do? And they said, well, we'd like to do a program called wearable art. Oh. And I went, oh, okay. And there used to be a boutique right on Madison Avenue called wearable art. And I said, but there's a store called that already. And the lady who was in charge at the time at QVC says, yes, I know, but we're going to do our version. And I'd like it to be, I'd like it to be scarves and jewelry. Oh, well, here I am, you know, so I did a few and we did it fine. And before I knew it, I was cutting up scarves and making blouses out of them because I thought this is crazy. Most women these days don't even know how to wear a scarf. Right. So and, um, and those patterns are so beautiful. Why not use it on a top? Exactly. So that's how that all happened. But it's, I didn't start out making real clothes. They were just scarves and jewelry. Oh and wow! I wasn't, I wasn't particularly happy about it at the time. <laughs> I just didn't think it, clothes made more sense. And how many years has it been now? It's it's pushing up to thirty. I, really? -ish. I oh, really? Know. Cool. Everybody. Joe says twenty eight. He's in the other room. But right. you know, we've, we've been saying twenty eight for five years. So I don't. Oh, know. shut up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, this week, you know, it's it's fortuitous because thank God for Joe because he's the one that tells me things. This week, you have uh, a little special thing going on. All week, you have designed clothes from Miss Vanna White. Well, I yes, isn't that a wild thing? I, and how did that happen? You know, that's America's fashion sweetheart, and yeah. she's been she's been modeling everybody's gowns and whatever for how many years 30 something yeah, years 30 something and has she, she worn yours she before she must have. she's amazing well and she's in great shape my god she is she's she's like a miracle she yeah. really is so how did it come out that you're doing like bob mackie week on wheel of fortune well they they've been after me for a while to do that you know oh really and they'll be able to offer uh, items for sale online. Uh, well, I saw I'm, there's a wheel of fortune shop. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, so we'll see how it. It. we're just starting really next week. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, good. You know, okay. you're always working. Every And what is so uh, every time I talk to you, there is another project. Everything yeah. in theater seems to be on hold right now. Did you have any projects in the works? I, well, there's nothing in the works. I mean, yeah. stores, stores are shut down. No, uh, theaters are shut down. I, it makes me wonder what's going to happen in this world. Yeah, um, I don't know. We none of us know. We're all yeah. kind of we we don't know. And um, but we we're hoping that it'll all straighten itself out. Let's hope. Yeah. Well, our well this this year this this last this coming up fall. I guess it was September October. We were going to take the Cher show, Broadway show, out on tour. Oh, right, we, of course. And, and we're going to do new costumes and all that. Well, that's been postponed till next year. Till people can go to a theater, of course. So, well, we, let's hope they can. And yeah. um, so it's kind of a wild time right now. I, I'm quite happy to be in my new house and uh, enjoy my house. And, and I live in a neighborhood and everybody's lovely and sweet and they and they all have dogs. I don't have a dog. Maybe I will yet. We'll <laughs> um, I, before I go from this, I do want to show just one picture they found, which I thought was gorgeous. Uh, 
this picture of you in your bed. I don't know how long ago this was. That was that was in the seventies. That's when well, was, it's pretty fabulous. That's when I was doing uh, the Carol Burnett and the Share Show all, and Sunny and Share Show uh, at the same time. And, and there was a book came out, and that was in the book. Oh. How were you able to have a personal life at that time with that much work? I, I didn't. I didn't have a personal life at that time. Yeah. I loved my work so much that that it never was. I I thought I died and gone to heaven. I was so happy to, to have really? that. Those jobs? Are you kidding? And then I had special Bitsy Gaynor specials. I I did a couple of movies during that time. I did. Uh, I did Vegas shows with yeah. with all the with all those ladies with the nude titties and stuff. I mean, it was just it was amazing. <laughs> Jubilee. I, I have, Don't forget was, Jubilee. Jubilee. But then before Plop. that, I did a show called Hallelujah Hollywood. Oh, I don't know that big, one. It was just as big as Jubilee. Wow. And, and so much fun. And, and it, uh, you know, the, those funny, well, they lovingly call them tits and feather shows. I love a tit and feather. Well, I do too. When I first <laughs> one time on Sunset Strip at, at the old Earl Carroll, where the mm -hmm. there used to be a show called the Moulin Rouge. They they changed it to the Moulin Rouge, and and um, and it was just like a tits and feathers show, but everybody had their bra on, so the so the children could go. So on on my fifteenth birthday. My mother says, that's where we're going to take him. That's where he wants to go, I'm sure. <laughs> I was so happy. And that, it just, it's a normal thing for me to design those kind of clothes. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think that they're beautiful. And I think the idea that they can be hookery, like you said, or risque, there is that line between. But they have to be beautiful. That's the thing, right? It's not cheap. Glamorous. Well, I like, I, you know, when Dolly Parton has always said, you know, she was inspired. Oh, what happened? Did I lose you? Oh, you're getting a call, Bob. Yeah. Well, Joe, delete that call. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Is, um, <laughs> are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Barely. Oh, okay. Well, I have never been accused of being soft, Bob. This is, we're doing this on Joe's phone and Nancy Dusso is calling. <laughs> you know, you know, another one of our vacation pals. Are you there? There, there you right go. There. Yep. I, I, I bet I can't hear you. All right. It's okay. Yeah, it's coming back, I'm sure. Oh, maybe. Oh, Bob, put me back on speaker. Sorry. Go, That's okay. I hear Joe. I hear yeah, Joe here. perfectly. I can't hear you. Really? I hear Joe. <laughs> well, he's loud. And now I'm loud? <laughs> He'll pay for that later. Hello. Um, well, I'm going to bring on our next guest. Stay there, Bob. Stay there. Um, our next guest is a member of the Fabulous Pointer Sisters. Bob Mackey has designed for them. And we have the fabulous Anita Pointer. Oh, my God. Now you uh, look like you're wearing a headdress. I know that's a sunflower. Oh, uh, hold on. Wait, no, she's not there yet. Hold on. Wait, we have to get her on. Okay, now you're on, Anita. Okay, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Anita, how did you, you meet Bob? Bob? How did you meet Bob Mackey, Anita? We met and Bob from the Carol Burnett show. Oh, really? He made these beautiful clothes for us for the show. That was one of the outfits that he made for Carol I'm Burnett. I'm sorry, Billy, the sound is really low here. Let me see if I can bring you back in. Wait but I can see all my beautiful drawings. Yeah. <laughs> hold, hold on, Bob, for one second. Let's see if I remove you. I've got to remember where this camera is. Are you, that's screen. okay. Uh, still didn't help, Bob? <laughs> no. no. All right, Bob, we're going to have to. I know it's you, me. Billy, but I can hardly tell what you're saying. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, uh, Joe, try to disconnect the studio and then reconnect. Disconnect. Disconnect what? Then I'll leave the studio and then try to come back in. Okay. Okay. Bye, honey. Anita, hi, sweetheart. Hi, Billy. Now, these are you? from Anita's book. I wanted to show people. Anita has this amazing exhibit at the Hollywood Museum. And here's just, I admit, I've already been there, but there's right. just a sample. 
This is like a <laughs> tiny sample. Oh my goodness. Um, Donnell Danigan is my angels. I ran into well, her at an Oscar party and she came to my house and so I told her about my collecting things from the 70s, all the things Bob Mackie made and Ola Hudson was our first designer and she oh, slashed and I, his mother. And I, right, I remember talk, talking to- Guns and to, Roses. It was right, it was the three of you, you, Bonnie and Ruth, and Ruth was pointing to a dress saying, she made that dress. <laughs> You know, that was her favorite, this little black dress. Yes, yes. That's yes old over husband. in the corner. Oh Hold God. on. Is Bob back? Can you hear us now, Bob? Yes, now. I'm sorry. About that. That's okay, my darling. <laughs> um, so I want to show this photo of, uh, well, actually, this is a sketch that Bob did of the Four Pointer Sisters in 77. Oh, I love it. I don't even oh. have that one. Bob, I don't have that one either. Uh, really? I don't know. I, would, really? I don't know. Well, I can't tell my sources, but of course, I oh. know this photo. Anita and Ruth both have, I think, in their living rooms. This yes, one. I have it in mine. I have it in my yeah. house. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorites of all time. I that, love that painting. That's a stereograph, and it's huge. And oh, I have it. Yes. I have one yes. right around the corner in my living room too. It's my yes. favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite. I love it. Oh my god. Um. So you two met on the Carol Burnett show. We did. Yes. We and I can't Carol tell Burnett. you how happy I was. Oh, how happy you were! How happy we were! We knew yeah, Carol no, Burnett, and, and we I, seen I all always, the shows, and we were so thrilled to be on the show, and then to have Bob Mackie designing for us. He took our old wardrobe, our antique clothes. Mm -hmm. and remodeled those as well. I'll show you some of the things right here. These dresses were vintage dresses that Bob Mackey redesigned for Carol Burnett show. Wow. Isn't that cool? And I have yeah. them in the exhibit at the Hollywood Museum. They're so beautiful. I just love them. I have you know, to go to the did, <laughs> He did these things for us for Vegas. And oh, wow. And Carol Burnett show. We went to Vegas with Carol Burnett. And oh, really? we did a show there with Tim Conway and he came out as the fourth pointer sister. So Bob made him a dress <laughs> just like the red fringe that we had. <laughs> and he would come on stage as the fourth pointer sister. It was the funniest show. We had, had it in Vegas and in Tahoe. We oh, had wow. a great time with Carol. I love her. Bob, now is this an example of getting to know them, knowing their style and their energy and designing for that? I don't know. I just saw them perform once and I said, oh, yeah, I know what to do with them. You know, <laughs> and, and the, the thing is, I, you know, you could put anything as long as it was exaggerated and had style. It worked on those girls and, and it still does. And what I love yeah. is each pointer has a different energy. Yeah, oh, that's true. That's that's true. true. We're all very different. That's so yeah. true. That's so true. But Bob Mackey's though, his designs took us to places we didn't even think of. Well, see, I remember the go. piano dresses that we did on the Share Show. Oh my God! Right, right. I love <laughs> right. and so right. many great things that he did for us that we didn't was, even think was, of that. That was the Elton John medley or something. Yes, yes, yeah. it was. It was the and Elton John had, medley. Suits with piano keys all the way down. Yes. One Yes. Oh my oh, God! Wow. I love those costumes so I have well. A of that somewhere. And then <laughs> you know, hats that went with and, them. And then more <laughs> recently, um, you know, about 15, 20 years ago, when the Pointer Sisters kind of went back to their jazzy roots and toured in Ain't Misbehaving. I know Bob designed those clothes. Here's a sketch that he did of Anita. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And they then so here they are <laughs> in the show. Yeah. Oh. Well, you got everything. That was good. <laughs> yeah, they asked us who we wanted to do the clothes, and we said, oh, for they? sure, Bob Mackey. There's my picture. That was, that was great. He great. Did, that I was for me, and I framed it. So well, and here you are. <laughs> here you all are. Oh, I love it. Now, see, I don't have that picture either. All right, oh, Anita, I'll send it to you. <laughs> I need well, Bob, that. I'll send it to both of you. All right, I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's again, that's a long-term relationship. I mean, that's got to yes. be at least thirty years between. Well, we started in the seventies, so you figure it out. <laughs> so, well, I right. know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I uh, look. I the when 70s. I seventies. Now, now I'm in my eighties, so you figure that one out too. And I'm in look, my seventies, so figure you know, that you out. You have more energy than anyone I know in my their eighties, with the exception <laughs> of Marilyn May, who puts us all to shame and is in her nineties. 
That's true. Yeah, that's true. Bob, yeah. I want to thank you, Bob, for doing this. I'm going to talk to Nita, but thank you. I love you. And I miss that I'm going to not see you this summer. Well, you never know. You no. never know. <laughs> it's Both great to see you, Anita. Oh, it's great fabulous. to see you, Bob. I love you so much. Thank Bob, you so much have, for everything should, you did for us. We should have a Bob Mackey and his ladies and get Mitzi and Carol and Lola <laughs> and everybody. Uh, it was so ooh. wonderful because when Bob was doing those the wardrobe for us for Carol Burnett's show and we didn't have anything, they gave us all the clothes. That oh my God, I didn't know. Yes. Really? That's oh the way God, how generous is that? Wow, yeah. that is so Bob, wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much, you Bob. So much, Bob. I will talk to you soon. And thank you, Joe, for helping. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll talk Bye to you guys later. Bye, thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Joe. <laughs> So Anita.